Apprentice Adramel washed the blood from her hands and stood up. The spell fussed around her as it dissipated, white tendrils retreating like mist before the sun. The young farmer she'd just healed stared at his forearm, poking at where the gash from the ploughshare had been. A miracle, he whispered. Thank you, Adramel tutted. We don't do miracles here, only magic. She dipped a cloth in the water bowl and handed it to him. Clean yourself, then rest for about a watch. She gestured to the row of mattresses at the far end of the infirmary, where several of the morning's patients were recuperating. After that, you can go home. He sat up, looking ready to wrestle a bear as he scrubbed his arm. I feel fine. My wife will be waiting for me. Adramel shook her head. Most patients were like this the first time they'd been healed by a wizard. You feel fine now. The spell uses some of your reserves of strength to speed the healing. She must have drawn out more than she needed. Judging the right amount was a skill she still needed to master. That's what's rushing around your body at the moment. It'll wear off soon and you'll probably fall asleep. Would you excuse me, please? I have a class to go to. If you need anything, just ask any of the other apprentices. Adramel walked past the rows of beds towards the door. The infirmary was quiet. Only about a third of the places were occupied. A faint white haze hung over the scene, the remnants of all the spells that had been cast here today. The teacher said it was a sign of her skill that she could sometimes see magic without needing a spell of her own to sense it, but Adramel found it annoying, like someone dropping a veil over her face at random intervals. At the door, Adramel met Teshan, one of the teachers and a member of the Academy's council. She was a kindly old woman in charge of the healing classes and the closest thing Adramel had to a favourite among the staff. Adramel smiled and nodded to her and stood aside to let her enter. Teshan didn't smile back. I was looking for you. Would you come with me, please? She strode across the square towards the side where the teacher's houses stood. What's this about, lady? Adramel asked as she followed. A private matter, Teshan said without looking back. They passed Teshan's house and stopped outside the one Adramel shared with her father. The interior was dark. Father would be teaching the second-year apprentices this morning. Teshan gestured for Adramel to enter. She did, wondering if this might be some complicated trap. But no, Teshan was a strong enough wizard to have no need of subterfuge if she wanted to restrain or punish an apprentice. Make light for us, please, said Teshan as she came in. Adramel took a deep breath and sought a calm place within her mind. Familiar thoughts came together, interlocking like the pieces of a puzzle. Magic could not be forced to obey, only guided in the right direction. She'd taken a long time to learn that, as all apprentices did. Doing without trying, a teacher had called it. Father, of course, had expected her to come into the academy already knowing most of what they taught in the first couple of years, as if knowledge could be inherited. The spell's final thought clicked into place, and a fist-sized ball of white light appeared at Adramel's shoulder. Teshan sat down as if this was her house, and Adramel merely a guest. She indicated the other chair, the one Father normally sat in. Reluctantly, Adramel pulled it out from the table. It had moulded itself to his shape over the years and felt as though it was trying to shrug her off. I want to talk to you about your future at the Academy, said Teshan. Adramel's stomach clenched. My future, she croaked, surprised at how dry her mouth had suddenly become. Teshan leaned over to pat Adramel's hand. It's nothing like that. Well, perhaps it is. It's about your father. It's no secret you don't get on with him. Adramel relaxed. That's like calling snow a bit cool. Tashan gave a little smile. Several of the council, myself included, were opposed to your becoming an apprentice here. Just because she's a wizard's daughter doesn't mean she'll be a good wizard herself, Adramel said, repeating the words father had relayed to her after his first failure at getting her admitted at the age of nine. Even now a few apprentices thought she hadn't earned her place. Tashan nodded and a shadow crossed her face. We were wrong about that. But we think his desire to make you the kind of wizard he wants is preventing your being the best wizard you can be. My apprenticeship will be over in two years, and then I can do whatever I want. She'd considered going east or south to find a village that needed a healer, though she had a nasty suspicion father would insist she stay here and marry the strongest male apprentice. Someone in Kyra Altamar has established another school for wizards. Adramel sat back, blinking. They have? Almost by definition, there was only one. Another would be like a second son. The council has decided to send you there. 
She took a piece of paper from an inside pocket, folded and sealed. This is a letter of introduction for you to present to their council. Oh. Adramal folded her arms. Fear and hope rolled over her like clouds gathering before a storm. The confused tangle wrapped around the spell in her mind, pushing and pulling it apart. Her light went out. As she calmed herself to cast the spell again, Tashan made a light of her own. Tashan leaned forward, a concerned look on her face. Don't you have anything to say? I thought you'd be pleased. I... Adramal toyed with a lock of her hair. Black like father's. Why did she have to look so much like him? I suppose I am. It's just unexpected. And Kyron Altamar, it'll take two seasons just to get there. More like two fortnights, said Tesha. A trader's caravan will pass through here later today. You can ride with them to the Aglos, and then a barge will take you downstream to the city. They'll be glad to have a wizard with them, especially one as good at healing as you. Don't I get any say in the matter? No, Tashan said with a wry grin. You and your father are a problem that's vexed the council ever since you started here. It seemed the only solution was to separate you, but that wasn't possible. Now it is, and we're not going to let either of you get in the way. I see. Somehow I don't think I'm the one you'll have to convince. As if on cue, a voice within Adramal's mind shouted her name. Moments later she heard someone running towards the house. The footsteps stopped, and Father stood in the doorway, leaning on the frame, panting hard. His thoughts sounded inside her head. There you are. Why didn't you answer? I've just heard some... some unbelievable news. Adramal looked at him impassively, waiting for him to remember his manners and start speaking aloud. A lesson, Tashan said, standing up. I trust you've been informed of the Council's decision. Yes, I... He looked at Tashan, seeming to notice her for the first time. His eyes glistened in her light. Had he actually been crying? Adramal couldn't remember ever seeing him weep, not even when Mother died. He took a couple of paces towards Teshan. How could you do this to me? To us! How dare you! A lesson, Teshan said with a weary sigh. This matter is not open for discussion. You've had five years to convince us you were right. The Council has been extraordinarily patient with you, but our patience has run out. Kair Altamar, of all places, said Father, his fists clenching. The headquarters of the Church of Mathran. They've obviously weakened since you were there. Otherwise the local wizards couldn't defy them so openly by founding a school. And Adramal has done very well in the self-defence classes. Father opened his mouth to speak and then seemed to think better of it. His voice echoed within her mind. So this is goodbye, then. I hope you'll come back and visit some day when your apprenticeship is over. Adramal stood up. Farewell, father. Although she had long looked forward to being able to say that, she was surprised to feel a lump in her throat. I'll try not to get on the wrong side of the priests, and I'll remember what you and the others have taught me. Be careful, her father said. I couldn't bear the thought of losing you. I, I know I don't do a very good job of showing it, but I'm proud of you. Your mother would have been too. My class will be wondering where I am, he said. He turned and left, walking like a mourner at a funeral. Adramel watched him to see if he'd look back. He didn't. I should start packing, she said. The caravan will be here soon. She looked around the half of the house that was hers. Packing wouldn't take long. Strange to think she might never see this place again. She doubted she would miss it. Thank you for listening to the first chapter of my novel, Death and Magic. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to know more or find out where to buy a copy, please visit my website at www.pembers.net. Thank you.